I'm gonna show you how you can design a landing page like this using only Figma plugins, even if you're not a designer. Hey everyone, I'm Elizabeth from Designer Up, helping you become a more skillful and mindful designer. So first I'm gonna hit F to create a new frame on the canvas, and this will be at desktop size 1440. Now let's set up our layout grid so that everything is nice and aligned. We're gonna add a grid here, and then we're gonna change this to columns. So these are our vertical columns. And I'm gonna do 12. I'll do a margin of 32 and a gutter of 16. I'm also going to add a horizontal layout to this. So we'll click the plus button again, and then we'll change this to rows. And I'm going to make the count auto. I want it to start from the top. So under type, I'm gonna go ahead and change this to top. And then I'm gonna change the height to four and the gutter to four as well. So we have a nice tight little horizontal grid now. And the last thing I wanna do is jump back into both of these and change the color a little bit. They're very bright and I don't want it to completely cover up my design and seep through. So I'm just gonna lighten the red and the blue so that it's a little bit more faint. To save some time, I'm going to add in a menu bar that I've already created. This is with the logo and some nav items. And now we're gonna start with the hero. So let's make a frame to contain everything that we're gonna have in this hero area. So clicking F, I'm gonna grab my frame tool and just draw out a frame here for the background of our hero. And you can see how it nicely snaps to our horizontal grid here. And then I'm going to add a background fill. And if you're wondering how I created this color palette, watch my other video on simple color theory and color technique. I promise you, if you've ever had trouble picking colors and color palettes before, you will have trouble no longer. For this one, I'm going to pull from a color palette I already made. So I'm gonna use this deep dark gray that's tinted with a little bit of blue from my primary blue color. And now it's time for our first plugin, which will help us create our typography font scale. So one of the more difficult things to do is choose the right type scale for our designs. And the type scale is just the relationship between the text sizes that you have, such as your heading and your body, etc. So go to plugins and select font scale. Now this brings up a little window where you can select different font scales. So we're going to start by looking at the different scale factors. This is just different increments between the text sizes. You can see perfect fifth, major third. I'm going to select major third as my scale factor to give me a medium amount of contrast between the text sizes and then a base of 21 and that will kind of be the foundation for the body size and all of the relative sizes between them. Now I'm going to click generate layers and you'll see this little group of text sizes comes up here and I can just copy this right into my design. It will snap right into my grid that we've created and then we can change the color and the text and the font and weight and all of that. And if you wanna know more about selecting the right fonts and font pairings and the difference between type, typography, fonts, all of that, check out my other video. So to speed this up, I'm just going to copy in some text that I created earlier. And here we have our H1, our first heading. Now I'm going to paste in some body text and I'm going to use the 16 size here because I want high contrast at the top. You could also use that next level up and I'm going to drop in a CTA button to finish this off. So the next thing that I want to do is add a graphic to the right side of this hero, which brings me to our next plugin, Blobs. So Blobs lets me create a thematic abstract shape that I can use as a background to add some dimension to my graphics. So I can change the complexity, I can give it some more unique odd angles, all without having to use the pen tool to create these myself. And then I just insert this and it creates a vector shape for me that I can then drag right into my hero. I'm going to resize this down a bit and then I'm going to remove the fill and add a stroke instead. And I'm gonna use my primary blue color, which is my brand color, and then I'm gonna increase the size to about two pixels to make it a little bolder. I'm gonna duplicate this now to create a layered effect here, and then I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit so that it overlaps. 
just creating some spiralized concentric circles. And then I'm gonna run it again one more time to create another blob type shape. Give it a little bit of variation. Okay, so now that's in place, I have some colors that I like. I wanna add in a couple of avatars here to represent the devs that are learning design. And this brings us to our next plugin, Pexels. So I'm gonna draw an ellipse here, and I'm just gonna put it on one of the cross points of my background graphic. And then I'm gonna go to plugin Pexels. Pexels is just a stock photography site with royalty-free images that you can use. I'm gonna look for a woman to be my first avatar. And just like that, with one click, she is inserted as a fill into my ellipse. And now I can adjust this fill so that she's more centered. So I'm gonna go to crop so I can kind of see the whole image over this um, mask. And then I can adjust it and resize it to be positioned in the center of this. Okay, so now I'm gonna just duplicate this and add a few more of these avatars around my circular graphic. Pexels isn't the only stock photo site that has a great plugin. I'm also using Unsplash here, and so you can get a little more variety in your images. So you can install that and try that as well. Okay, so continuing with the visual storytelling here, I wanna add in a few design app related graphics, which brings us to our next plugin, Vector Logos and Brands. Now, if you are used to doing this every time you need to find an asset or a logo, then you know how tedious and time consuming this can be. So instead, we're gonna use this plugin called Vector Logos. This magic plugin lets you search for a logo by name and then brings up the perfect clean vector logo right in Figma for you to use in your designs. I just searched Figma. I'm going to drop it in here and it's that easy. We have our logo. So I have a few more of these components that I've already made. So I'm just going to drag them in here and then let's switch off our layout grid just so that we can see the full hero. Okay, so that was pretty amazing that we could make this whole hero with just plugins and not having to do any custom graphics. And so let's move on to our next section and I wanna do three features here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a frame and then make my first ellipse here for my icon. I'm gonna use this cool lime green color from my palette. And then referring back to my type scale, I'm going to just create a heading and a paragraph here to describe this first feature. Okay, now it's time to drop in an icon using Google Material Symbols plugin. So again, hunting for icon sets can be a little bit tedious, but with this plugin, you can use Google's material icons or material symbols and search for an icon. And then you can change the weight, the fill, the size. I'm gonna look for one that represents video. We'll go with HD here. And then it drops in a perfect vector icon. I'm gonna put that right into the background frame here and I'm gonna resize this to about 48 pixels. And so I'm gonna quickly duplicate this and create an auto layout here so that I can make three of these. There are a couple of other great icon sets that have plugins, so I'll leave those in the description and I'll come back and switch these out later. Okay. So the next section, I wanna do some logos of trusted companies. So I'm gonna add a title here, maybe something like loved by developers that work at these places or that are from these companies. And I'm going to set up this next section called logos. And again, we're gonna use this handy vector logos plugin that we used for the Figma and Sketch logos in the hero. So I'm gonna search for Microsoft, for example and then drop that in. And then I'm just gonna quickly search for the rest of my logos to create a row here. Then I'm just gonna select them all, create an auto layout, and then space them evenly. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And it was significantly faster than going to Google and searching for each of these and bringing them into my Figma file. So let's move on to the next section. I'm gonna create a call out feature here and I'm going to make my frame and then I am going to add in another blog. So I'm just going to copy one of them from the top that I used. And this time I'm going to add the fill back in and remove the stroke. 
Okay, now on to our next very useful plugin, Remove BG. First, I'm going to make a rectangle. Now it's important that you make a rectangle and not a frame for this one because we'll need it for the plugin we're gonna run. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the avatars. I'm gonna select the Pexels plugin and find a person here to add. And I want this person to have a pretty plain background and I wanna see most of them and like the upper part of them. This one looks really good. So click to insert that. Now this plugin does have to be linked to your remove.bg account, but it's free and you can go on there and set up an account and then just grab the API key. So after this runs, you're gonna see that it separates it into two layers with a fill and a background. If I remove that fill layer, now we have a perfectly transparent gal here. And I'm going to resize this rectangle now to make sure that I'm not cutting off her shoulder or any part of her. And then I'm just gonna place it right here at the bottom of this frame. And we're gonna create that dimension and that depth and that graphic by using this blob that we had from earlier. I'm also gonna duplicate that and do another one with a stroke to give it you know, some more background layers here. So that is looking pretty cool. And again, super easy to do. I didn't have to go hunting for graphics. Finally, I'm gonna drop in this text block, again, using my type scale to get those sizes right and using the same colors from my color palette. And there you go. This whole page so far has been created and designed with just the use of these plugins. So these few plugins are so handy, whether you're a designer or you're not a designer, they can really help you design faster and easier. So here is our final design using all of those plugins we just went through. I am going to leave the source file for this Figma design in the description. And I would love for you to finish off this page using the plugins that we went through in this video. And if you do, and if you like it, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.